Here we are at the Sandrift Resort in Wisconsin Dells, Wisconsin. Tesla has kindly provided two high-powered wall chargers uh, to replace our NEMA 1540 due to the very high volume of Model S owners and soon-to-be Model X owners that have been uh, destination charging with us. And uh, we're going to have the unboxing. So, um, I obviously don't have to unbox two of them for you. Uh, they both came in a brown cardboard box with this much more awesome box on the inside. Let's see what we have on here. High powered wall connector, Tesla part number, and the serial number. So it looks like all these units are serial numbered. And packaging. And look at that. Here we have a little bag of mounting hardware and an additional grounding wire. And this right here would be the wand hanger. Uh, the wand from the uh, wall charger would clip into there so it would be neatly off, off the ground. And then you can drape the wiring over the top. Tell you right now, the cabling on here is much thicker than the uh, Universal Mobile Connector, also as the UMC, and have to be as we, this thing can put through twice as much amperage. Uh, we have high power wall connector installation guide. I'll go over that in a separate video. Uh, installing the cable hanger. Ooh, ooh. And this would be apparently the wall mounting plate for Vision 6. that upside down. Nope, don't think so. I'll have to check the uh, owner's manual on that. The holes are apparently opposite. But we'll come back to that. It's a very heavy unit. Uh, and there you go, there's your charging wand. It's uh, for the US style plug, of course. Um, fairly, fairly standard, same plug as what's on the superchargers and the UMCs. And let's see, how do we open this, uh, this thing up here? Uh, it looks like I'll have to do some unscrewing to open this up. Um, it'll have to get opened anyways, as... Um, uh, I'd have to set the dip switches in here to match the uh, circuit breaker type. So, let's see what revision is this. Uh, this is revision B, so this is their latest model with the correct and upgraded fuses. So, I am going to cut the video, go through the owner's manual and installation guide, and uh, I'll do an update from there. 
here we have the inside of a Tesla HPWC high powered wall charger. Uh, now these are capable of being installed on a 100 amp breaker to provide up to 80 amps of charging uh, or on a uh, as low as a 40 amp breaker um, depending on what you have available uh, meant as a permanent installation and uh, uh, let's go over some of the internals good job counting buddy right here we have the contactor. Uh, the contactor, uh, when you plug the car in and when the signal is sent to uh, start the flow of power, uh, this contactor closes, um, thus allowing the flow of power. Um, now I was able to read on the side. Uh, this is made by Curtis. Uh, It's hard to read, but it looks like it might be manufactured in New York and not one of Curtis's China models. Now, Curtis is known, well known for their um, electric car motor controllers and other DC and AC powered motor controllers. Um, I can attest to the quality of their components. I use their motor controllers in my conversion cars, uh, namely uh, my Alfa Romeos that I convert. Um, so. Um, I'd have to say, based on previous experiences, that is a very high quality component. Um, now this is the second generation of the high power wall charger. I'm not familiar with the first generation. I've never gotten to see a, at least the insides of a first generation. And I believe they had a different style fuse. Um, now, generation B has uh, two of these bus fuses. Um, they are made in Mexico. That's about all I can, all I could really tell. Um, without taking them out, I can't quite see what the amp rating is on them. Now, believe it or not, it actually looks like it says 200, but um, it's it is a little hard to see. There are two two of them, and I do not believe uh, having those made in Mexico is any cause for concern. It has um, pretty much every electric car fuse that I have dealt with is oddly made in, made in Mexico um, yep go down a little further here uh, now these two terminals here are where your input power cut goes into so you'd have each leg of your uh, 240 volt input so you'd have 120 volt going here 120 volt from the opposite leg going there of course that totals 100 or 240 uh, down here is your ground ground bar and of course you got a nice flexible ground wire which goes to uh, goes down and out into the charging wand Um, they have a connection terminal here, um, and this connection terminal uh, just connects internal wiring uh, for the hot and uh, the, the power to go to uh, what's in the charging wand. And the reason why they they decided to separate the two spots or the two two pieces of it, where if um, something were to happen and uh, say a vandal were to cut cut the um, the charging cable off and uh, you know steal copper or just plain old being a jackass um, all you'd have to do would be unscrew the wand cable disconnect disconnect there and let's zoom in a little bit more Uh, these two wires right here are part of the pilot signal, uh, get sent pilot signal uh, to, you know, back and forth communication from the uh, HPWC uh, from the car. Gino. Uh-uh, don't touch. Don't touch. Okay. 
All right, good job. High five. Daddy's doing a video. Come on. Wow, good job. Wow. Now we have this little bit here. Oh, uh, no. Oh, no. Oh, okay. I'll put your cushion back up. Sit. Or lay down or play dead, whatever it is midgets do. Um, back to this. Uh, this is what is known as a ferrite core. And uh, basically it's... Uh, uh, um, it's a, uh, it's ferrite, uh, ferrite core, um, <laughs> cabling, morning. what? It says this height. I don't know where you put it. Basically with the cables passing through it, it's ferrite core it's absorbs it's stray, um, stray radiation and frequencies, uh, to help minimize, um, impacts on other devices. Um, you can very noticeably tell... Um, just as an example, if you pass under a power line with the AM radio running, uh, the AM radio signal is disrupted. Or something similar, like uh, if you have a vacuum plugged in, you're, someone, in the house in the, someone in the house is vacuuming away, and uh, your TV starts getting fuzzy. Um, ferrite cores can help mitigate some, some interference like that to a certain extent. And of course, we just have the whole circuit board there. Nothing really to get into too too much detail. Uh, and of course, we have the dips dip switches where we set where we set uh, the charging speeds. Uh, we have uh, the setting for the different breaker styles. So right now I'm set for 40 amp. Uh, so it's right, 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 left. 50 amp would be right, right, left, right. 60 amp breaker would be right, right, left, left. 70 amp breaker is right, left, right, right. 80 amp breaker would be uh, right, left, right, left. 90 amp breaker would be right, left, left, right. And 100 amp would be right, left, left, left. Right here is where you plug in. Oh, you can't see that. Let me zoom out. Now the front. The front of the HPWC has LED lights that light up. Has LED lights that light up. And right here is where you plug those in. Okay, so now that Krabby Baby is remedied. Anyways, the front of the HPWC has a series of green LEDs. Uh, similar to what you will see on the UMC, the portable charging cables. And if we flip this over, there's the uh, Tesla circuit board. It almost looks like they used gold for the big T. Ooh, shiny. Lots of stamps, lots of serial numbers on here. This is also says revision 2. in from interesting stuff. So anyways, um, get this charging cable. Once this is set up, then you connect this. So, that would be right down there. You better have to flip it this way. Put it around, clicks right in. Okay, thank you for the juice. And uh, after that is on, the front snaps right on, and there's two Torx screws that go on the bottom to keep this secure so someone can't steal it or get inside easily. You'd need a, a Torx driver, uh, also called a uh, 
ironically a star drive and uh, oh sorry there you have it um, she kind of looks like the, uh, the sheathing of the uh, cable is actually looks kind of like a hose looks like they just ran the wires through a hose and hey whatever works it's fairly flexible and let's see oh um, it accepts one inch conduit and that can either be run through the left side here or also through the back which would be uh, where's the knockout for that I guess that would be right there so I guess you're drilling a hole here it looks like I wasn't too sure on that but I guess so you're gonna have to drill a hole be about here or off to the side. You have to cut away and drill some holes as rubber. Once the rubber comes off, which it doesn't appear to. And there you have it inside of a HP WC. Complicated little thing. Questions post below. I'm too tired to answer anymore right now and I gotta go put a crabby kid to bed. Good night, everybody.